<laughs> All right, so notes on drawings are very important. You have to put something on there. Some people put a couple notes and some people put a lot of notes, like paragraphs of it. And um, unfortunately, I'm becoming the note heavy person. <laughs> Anyways, you can do it multiple ways. So you can put it directly on the floor plan, just type it in, but that's not a good practice because it covers the floor plan and then you can't see what's behind the text. You can move it outside of the floor plan, like just next to it, like and leader, put a point pointer or arrow into the thing itself. Uh, the problem is you end up having like a cloud if you have a lot of notes. So the other way you can do it is to use Revit Keynotes. Revit Keynote places a symbol on the floor plan and it links it to the note that's on the side of the drawing. Or you can actually put the notes on a dedicated note sheet if that's your thing. It's only a couple steps. You have to make a file, link it in, make a, um, a schedule, a legend schedule, and then put the keynotes on the floor plan. So let me show you how we do that. Okay, so I have the sample project open and you can see that there are no, there's nothing that says keynotes on here and there's no notes on this sheet. So before we even get started inside of Revit, let's open up Notepad and start typing in our notes. There's a special format that you need to follow and it's very simple. So to find Notepad, you basically hit the Windows key or you can go down here to your search feature and type in Notepad. So let's open it up and you're presented with a blank canvas. So Notepad is like the bare bones text document. Don't use Word, or don't use Word docs or anything like that because it has extra information and extra formatting that'll actually screw up the um, the the link between Revit and Notepad. So you want to use Notepad. Okay. So to start off with, you want to make sure that you define your headers. So we want to do a abbreviation symbol. So let's do you know P P for power, and then everything in here is separated by a tab the tab function on your keyboard. So press tab and we're going to describe what this header is. So power, um, eh, power notes is kind of redundant inside of notes. So we're going to say P for power and then we can hit enter L tab lighting. And uh, I'm just going to keep it simple. We'll stop here. So now that we define our headers, we're going to put a few notes in so that we can link them in our drawings. So I'm going to press enter a couple times to give me some space. And then I'm going to start well off with, um, let's say P one for my first note. Then I can hit tab and I can do power note one period. And then you have to make sure that you hit tab and close it off with the same letter that you started with. So in this case it's P. So P two tab power note two tab P. And then once you're done with one section, just hit enter a couple times and you can start off with the next header. So it's L1 tab lighting note one or one tab L and L2 lighting note two tab L L. So you'll notice that for some reason the tab between you know the last period and the L is bigger than it what you see up here in power. Um, there's it's just some weird graphical thing. I haven't figured out why it does that, but it works just fine. Just make sure you hit tab. So actually, let me show you one thing. If you hit, if you did L3 lighting note three, and instead of doing tab, you accidentally hit space and just typed in L, it doesn't close off your note. And I'll show you what happens inside of Revit if you ever come across something like this. All right, so now that we made our note, you wanna make sure that you save this document in a place where all the other users can get access to it. So don't put it on your desktop and then you would have someone else open it on another computer and they won't have any other notes. You want to make sure you save it inside. Let's say if your model is in BIM 360, put the note on BIM 360 server and then we'll link it from there. If your server is local to work, let's say it's inside a server room at your office, then save it in there. So I'm going to put it on my documents just because I don't want to, you know, send this anywhere else right now. So we're going to do save as and then, you know, for you, put it in a good server spot. For me, I'm just gonna put it here on documents. Uh, we're just gonna call this project name and keynotes. Okay, so we're gonna hit save and then we can close out of this. So now that we've created our keynote, we're gonna link this keynote into Revit. It's very simple. You come up here to the annotate tab, then over here on the right, you have keynotes. So we're gonna click this drop down menu 
and we're going to click on Keynote Settings. So right here is where you can dictate your file location. If you want to hit Browse, you can pull up, you can go to where the file is, click on that, and hit Open. So the Keynote table reloaded successfully. And you can double check that by clicking on View. So when you click on view, it brings up a little collapsed box of all your notes. So we can go ahead and expand these notes. So over here in, in the L column, you can see that it's for lighting. So we have L1, L2, and then here's L3 that kind of sticks out at the end. You can even see the L here. That's because I mistyped it. Instead of a tab, I hit space. So if you ever see something like this, that means you gotta go back and remove the space between the end of your note and the letter and put a tab in there. So that's how you fix that. Um, but the rest of the stuff looks good. See, my power notes are lumped under power. My lighting is under lighting. So we're going to close that for now. Now over here, uh, for file pathing, I always like to hit relative, just in case if you ever move the whole project, then updating one will be able to fix the rest. Like if you update Revit's um, pathing to find the other Revit links, this will update as well. Numbering method is where you can have a little creativity or, you know, make it match your company standard. If your numbering method is by keynote, then what you type into the note field, like P1, L1, P2, that's exactly what shows up on the floor plan and on your drawings. It won't get renumbered if you skip every other number. Like say, say you wanna use note one and three, but you don't need two, your drawing will actually just say P1 and P3. It won't skip over that and just make it sequential. If you were to renumber if you did numbering method by sheet, then it'll all be sequential and it will all just take whatever notes are on the drawing and do one, two, three, four, five down the right hand side. So some people like to have it where it's like P1 all means the same everywhere. So you can say like note one is provide equipment pad and everywhere you see note one, you already know what that means. You don't have to go ahead and read the note on the side. But then sometimes on the other hand, if like having P1 P3, P7 bugs you, like if you want it to be one, two, three, and four, then you have to go by sheet. I always use by keynote, so we're just gonna go ahead and stick with that. All right, so we're, we're done here, we're gonna hit okay. And then step two is going to be to create your keynote legend. So over here under legend, you wanna go ahead and right click. We're gonna do a new keynote legend, and then we're gonna hit okay. So this brings up the keynote legend properties window. And from here, you want to just double check a couple things. Um, your keynote value and text needs to be in this column over here. So if you don't see it, you might actually be here. We'll just reset this real quick. Let's say you're presented with like this window. So you want to go ahead and click on this, bring it to keynote tags, and then bring your two elements over. Make sure your keynote value is on the top and then your text is second. So let's go over here to filter and I'm going to put my legend on every sheet so that whatever the note is, it's gonna be on the right hand side of the sheet. So I'm gonna hit filter by sheet. If you have a dedicated note sheet, then you don't need to check this. Just put your entire schedule on that sheet and it'll populate with every single notes that you have in the entire project. Okay, so then now moving on to sorting and grouping, we are going to sort by key value. And that means like whatever, like P1 is gonna be ahead of P2, for example. And uh, we don't need to itemize every instance. We, if there's like five keynotes of the same thing, we just need one of them. So we need that unchecked. Then the last one, I believe it's um, not under formatting, it's under appearance. The blank row before the data, I like to take that out so that the header and the notes are kind of together. So we're gonna hit okay. And all right, so here's your keynote legend. Right now it's blank. So we can go ahead and close this and right here, here's our lighting floor plan. To put the keynotes on here, you simply grab the legend, click and drag over here, and um, always expand that last one out a little, that little triangle. Pull it out so that your note actually has like a paragraph format and it doesn't just stretch very long. Okay, so now your keynotes are linked. Your, your legend is on the sheet. Now we have to place our keynote um, tags. So if you don't have a keynote tag, feel free to go in the description below. There's a download link, you can download one. Uh, some people have their tags like really wide. Some people have them like circular. Um, ours is a hexagon and it, you can fit up to two digits in there, like a P1 or something. So uh, we're going to tag this by going up here to annotate and then under keynote, 
um, you can tag by element, material, or user. I generally use user. Uh, the architects tend to use elements and type. So the element is by type. So if you tag like a type A fixture, that note will change if you change that fixture type to like type B or something. Uh, and, and the material type is the same thing. If you change this, the material finish of an equipment, then that note will update to reflect that. Um, we don't need any of that fanciness. I just need user keynotes. So we're gonna ahead and click user keynotes. Okay, so now that it's selected, we can go over here. Um, you can make sure your leader's on if you want to. Pick a fixture, come up, over, and then you'll have the option to select your notes. So we're just gonna go ahead and expand this. I want note one, hit okay. And there's our note one. So if you zoom out and go over here to your keynote legend, come on, deactivate. You'll see that note one has populated here. If we add note, if we add an L2, it'll automatically show up here. Let's do that. So, so TGG, there's note two and okay. And there we go. So every time you add a keynote symbol on a floor plan, this will pick it up and start populating your notes here. So let's say you want to change one of your notes. You have to open up your notepad. So the best way to do that is to go up here under keynote settings again, and then grab this uh, link. So I would copy that and then paste this inside of my Windows Explorer to find this file. It'll pop right up. So in here, we're going to fix a couple things. We're going to delete that space, hit tab. And um, let's say for note two, you know, we want to add more st stuff to this note and we want to save it. So you save the file and then I generally always close it when I'm done. Once you save it, come back to here under keynote settings. You want to make sure you hit reload. When you reload that, the text updates. So you'll see like this says lighting note two. So hit reload and then hit OK, and you can see that the note then populates with the new text. If you don't update, you just hit PDF to send this drawing out, you're never gonna have the updated notes. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. All right, so that's how I typically do my sheet notes. Um, you put a symbol on the floor plan and then you just have the notes populate on the side as needed. If you want to do an entire sheet of like sheet notes in one drawing, it's pretty simple. Under the legends, like I said, uncheck here. Uh, we'll just do one together. So let's see, under here, uh, we're going to do a new keynote. So we'll just call this um, keynote legend all notes or something. So hit okay. And yeah, the keynote value in the text stays the same. Under filter, we're going to leave that unchecked. Sorting and grouping by keynote value and uh, blank note, take out the blank row. So we're gonna hit okay. So this will list all of the sheet notes that are placed on the project regardless of if it's on this sheet or not. So if you place it, for example, we're gonna go over here to, I don't know, North Lighting Plan Level 1. And I'm gonna to come to this fixture and we're gonna place, we'll say P1, or we'll place P1 on here. So P no, P1 is on this sheet. Um, we have L1 and 2 on this one. But if you were to go up here to the legends for all notes, you'll see that it has all of our notes listed in here. And then you can put this on like a dedicated sheet. Let's do like new sheet, okay. And drag this onto here. So this one will be, this will just have all of your notes in one spot. Um, if it gets really long, you can actually click this little split schedule button and it'll, it'll split it into two rows. And you can keep clicking it, I believe. Or, hmm. Oh yeah, you, you can, you, that's right, you can keep clicking this. I think you have to click it over here. There we go. And keep going, there we go. Now you have three rows. Um, this is really long. <laughs> so let me shrink that down a little. Do I have an extra note? Oh, I do. Okay. Yeah, there we go. And then we move this over. Okay, sorry, <laughs> a little bit of a setup glitch. But you can split this into multiple columns by keep clicking that button over here. Uh, if you wanna drag this down, you can resize it. So all of your notes will end up on one sheet and it's kind of helpful if you're just designing and you wanna have all your um, specific details on one sheet to reference. Okay, so that's my spiel on Keynotes. Hopefully you can get that set up. If you have questions, you can find us on Discord or Patreon, um, or you can just put your comments 
you can put your questions in the comments below. Uh, I'm also going to be running some Q&A sessions every other Friday. So I believe this Friday there's one coming up. You can go to the channel to get notified of when I go live. Uh, if you have like specific questions, you can bring it up there. If you want to make sure your questions are absolutely answered, uh, Patreon members will get priority. So you can find links to that down below as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.